gemstones often have vibrant and translucent colours, which are the key part of why they are so valuable. However, the colours in a gemstone are not normally created by the majority of the elements present. Instead, the colours often come from impurities within the structure of the stone. And this is the case in the gems ruby and sapphire. The deep red rubies and the blue or purple sapphires are all basically the same gemstone. The varieties of a crystalline form of aluminium oxide called corundum. However, along with the aluminium oxide, there are sometimes trace amounts of iron, titanium, vandium, and chromium. A pure corundum is either colourless and clear or a pale white. There's various impurities which give corundum sparkling colours which make it so valuable. And even these can only really be seen when the gemstone has been cut and polished. The key element in the ruby's red colour is chromium oxide, which may represent up 1% of the mass of the stone. And it's the different absorption spectrum of the chromium which gives the ruby a deep red colour. Smaller amounts of chromium present can give the stone a pinkish colour rather than the famous deep red. However, when chromium oxide is paired up with aluminium oxide, it also means the stone will fluoresce in ultraviolet light, magnifying the intensity of the colours in the stone, especially in bright daylight rather than in artificial light. This ability to fluoresce, however, is impeded by the presence of trace amounts of iron in the stone to absorb the red light created by the ultraviolet light source. Since the value of the ruby is related to the intensity of the colour, most valuable rubies, therefore, have little or no iron present in them. This, however, doesn't mean that iron being present in corundum is always a bad thing. Both iron and titanium are bonded together in the stone create a blue sapphire. Unlike in a ruby, where the chromium is absorbing all the light except for red, here the titanium and iron are absorbing all the light except for the blue. The amount of titanium and iron needed to be present for, to produce a blue sapphire is really tiny. Less than one hundredth of one percent is all that's required to produce a vivid blue colour in the stone. The other variety of the corundum gemstone is one with the element vandium is present. This will give the gem a purple colour. Normally it's referred to as purple sapphires, but the chemical composition is different from a blue sapphire as the blue sapphire is from a red ruby. Sometimes the impurities are not actually blended in with the aluminium oxide crystals. Instead, the impurities can form kind of on the edge or the border between two regions of aluminium oxide crystals. These thin zones Normally, of titanium dioxide provide a white contrast to the rest of the stone and form a pattern of a six pointed star within the gemstone, producing what's known as a star ruby or a star sapphire. Since rubies and sapphires have the same basic chemical composition, just with minor differences in their impurities, can be found in similar locations around the world, including Southeast Asia and Australia.